Will you move back to Asia? Have you heard the saying, never say never? Today, Bianca is going to ask me some tough questions about Asia. Why did you leave Asia? This is a question that requires a lot of details to answer, Bianca. There are a lot of things that happened, a lot of things that initially brought me to Asia. So I want to start out talking about why I originally moved to Asia, which is something, it's a story that some of you guys have already heard in the past. Basically, I was working together with a guy from Scotland who was living in Malaysia at the time. And we were working on an SEO project. Then he was like, hey, Gerald, why don't you come live with me in Malaysia? We can work from here. We can hang out together. And this whole idea of living in a tropical country, you know, think about it. It really inspired me to, to grow and to work more. And when my friend pointed it out, I was like, I'd be a fool not to take him up on this offer because I did not like living in my home country where it was cold, dark and a little bit you know, quiet at times. And so I felt like, you know, when I opened up Google and I searched for the photos, I really felt like this was gonna be a good call. And then I did decide to go there. We did work together and we had a really great time. And it all started out in Malaysia for me, but after time I moved to Vietnam. It was like in 2013 when I moved there. And that was a whole new journey in Vietnam. But to answer the question why I left, I feel like sometimes in life, if you feel like you cannot move ahead, you can not progress where you're located. I think, Bianca, it's maybe time for a different path. It's kind of like the same as feeling stagnant because that's what it is. I was stagnant where I was living and I didn't really see a path for me going forward. And then I was like, well, it's probably time to look for a different destination. But breaking it down why I left Asia, I was going to say that I did not find the opportunities that I wanted to realize at that time. For instance, I wanted to own real estate. I just wanted to do more investments that I was not able to do there for a number of reasons. Foreigners are prohibited from investing in certain categories categories. And that really kind of made me open my eyes where I felt like, okay, this is a great country to vacation in. It is a great country to grow in, to meet people, to network. But then I was like, maybe there's a little bit more to life than just doing that. And because of that, I decided I'm going to move out of Asia and I'm going to go live in a different geographic location, which I ended up doing. I feel like wherever you guys are at in life, you have to see everything as a gift of God. Like everything is a gift. And you can fulfill any dreams that you've set for yourself, assuming that you're willing to put in the work. Whatever is between you, where you're at right now and where you want to be, is usually a lot of work. It's skill development. And once you develop these skills, there's really nothing that stands in, in your way. How does living in Asia compare to living in Paraguay? Another question that requires a lot of detail. So I'm going to try and be as detailed as possible for you, Bianca. Asia, you know, just taking a look at the whole climate compared to here, I feel like it's very similar in many ways. You know, here in Paraguay, you have tropical climate in the north. And here where we're at in Asuncion, it's subtropical. Great. You got that in Vietnam. You know, Vietnam got subtropical climate in the north, in central Vietnam. But it's, I would say, between subtropical and tropical. But in southern Vietnam, it's definitely tropical. In northern Vietnam, you know, it gets definitely chilly in the wintertime. And the good news is that there there is a similarity here because you're from here, Bianca, you're from Asuncion. So you know that here, based on what people are saying, you know, we've been living here, there's like a period every year where it gets cold or cold. You know, it's not like snow or anything, but it does get cooler and a little bit cold, especially for people living here who are here permanently, you know, when the winter comes and it's not long, right? It's not for half a year, but it's for like a few weeks. And then it does get a little bit cooler. Now, do you want to say a few things about that maybe? The winter is it takes just a few weeks and it's for it's not really cold but we are not get used to cold days do you use like jackets or what do you use in the winter time you don't go out like this right no so you can we use over. jackets another point which is obvious to people who have been living in emerging countries but maybe not so obvious to an outsider is that you know the people here are so friendly and you know this you're from here and, and so for a north american a european coming here and you know i'd say that americans are blessed in that way because i always felt like america is a very polite country it is very forward thinking in many ways and it's probably easier to connect but you know for instance i have latino friends living in europe and they're telling me i look forward to going back to latin america because with europeans you always have to break the ice you know it is not easy to break in for for them to open up 
And I feel like here it's easier. Like here you can go anywhere you want and you can start a conversation. And of course, not everyone's gonna open up right away, but many people do. And this is kind of really good if you're coming from a place where that's not the case and you're used to putting in so much work to start a conversation and you're like, I don't know where that's gonna go. But if you're here, it's like any person, you know, can be your friend or your acquaintance pretty quickly. Like if you wanna be a close personal friend, then that's a whole other question. You know, that takes time anywhere you go but just taking a look at how easy it is to connect with people because of where they're from and because of how open they are to foreigners embracing them because again this is an immigrant country and we've talked about this a lot like you're gonna see a whole new level of like you know connection here that you probably have not seen before and this is a big inspiration for a lot of people where they're like living in you know at home and they're like in in their European country and, and they're like wow if I could just go out and hang out with someone or if I can just have like a nice conversation with my security guard, you know, where there's not this long distance between people. And I feel like here there's a lot of closeness with people. And I think that that's really cool. And that's very different to what I'm accustomed to back home, where it's like for me to do that, I must know the person for years for that to happen here. It can happen anywhere. At every corner, Bianca, it can happen. For an outsider, for an extranjero, that's a nice feeling to have you know are there any other similarities there are many similarities i would say another one is you know just comparing North asia with latin america specifically paraguay is that here it's summer pretty much all year round like you pointed out there is an exception you know there are a couple weeks a year where it gets cold and you told me i am pulling out my jacket so there there's this like exception right but it's not like for months so if you're coming from like vietnam if you're coming from thailand and you're used to the tropical climate i don't think you will have a problem problem adjusting to the climate here it's very similar and there is a little bit of a cooler season that lasts for a couple of months so if you want that variety in climate i think paraguay is a place worth considering and any other similarities i feel like i pointed out the warmth of the people then another one is of course the cost of living that's a big 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 thing right now like the cost of living in europe is killing people and we have videos upcoming on this topic where we are comparing paraguay with other countries specifically the cost of living in paraguay you guys are gonna love this because we're gonna undress a lot of the hidden facts about the recent increases in cost of living in places such as america united kingdom and we're gonna to compare those increases with the current prices in Paraguay. Will you move back to Asia? Have you heard the saying, never say never? Would I move back to Asia is the question. Uh, like I told you, right? Never say never, Bianca. You never know. Like life changes, how you feel about things, how you feel about places, how you feel about people, it changes over time. So I always think never say never. At this point in time, given my current priorities, and I know that there are many guys of you who are on the same page with me, I don't think I'll be moving back to Asia anytime soon. Like at this time in life, it's about capital creation and it's about building businesses and it, it's about owning things which is easier to come by in Europe in North America and Latin America and based on that Bianca I feel like I will not be moving back however that doesn't mean you cannot vacation in Asia and it's a great place for that uh, like we said the cost of living in Asia is very comparable to Paraguay and it's a lot of fun so it really depends on what you're looking for but given the stage in life where I'm at I feel like in the foreseeable future I will not be moving back